Hey there, class. We're here today to look at example number six from our Physics One notes. So basically, we have a sled and it has a given mass here, and it's brought to rest from traveling at 9.5 meters per second, which, by the way, that's, that's a relatively fast sled. Um, but it's on a horizontal surface and it takes 38.2 meters to actually come to rest. So our goal here is to find the work done on the sled by the frictional force. So to show some understanding, we're going to draw ourselves a picture here. And uh, what we know is that this sled, we're going to represent that here with its center of mass. And uh, it's going to have gravity pulling it down. That's by the Earth. It's going to have a uh, normal force pushing it up. That's because of the ground. And the ground also, the, the, the snow in the ground is going to create friction. So that kind of, that's going to pull it backwards this way. Uh, I guess I'm making the assumption that it is moving to the right. So that means the friction is going to be to the left. Now, a couple things that might come in handy here. Um, first of all is that the force of gravity is, we can remember here, is mass times gravity. And that the force of friction is going to be, be able to calculate it by taking mu times the, the normal force. And that's just magnitude, so we don't need to worry about the, uh, the vector symbol there. Um, all right, so also thinking about this, from a kinematics and energy standpoint, we're going to make a note here that the sled is going to be traveling at 38.2 meters, and I guess we will make that the positive direction. Uh, so we can go up here, put down a positive direction here, so the positive x direction for our reference is there. Uh, it's going to undergo a negative acceleration because it's slowing down. We don't know what that is, but we do know that the object comes to rest. Okay, it does come to rest, so its final velocity is going to be zero. Likewise, its original velocity, I think we knew it was, what was it, 9.5, I think? So 9.5 meters per second, and that's going to be in the positive direction. So we know that it is going to come to rest um, after it goes through this acceleration, or it, we could say a negative acceleration or deceleration, if you like. Uh, as far as energy goes, let's take a look at that. Um, the potential energy can be found by taking MGH, and MGH is going to be the same exact height. So this is going to remain unchanged, okay? So there's no change to the kinetic energy or sorry, potential energy. On the other hand, kinetic energy is one half times mass times velocity squared. Now, since the velocity at the end is zero, we are gonna actually have zero kinetic energy at the end. Uh, at the very beginning uh, of our problem here, we'll have one half times mass times velocity original squared. And that's a again some kind of calculatable value that we can we can do. So let's think about a strategy that we can use to solve this. So probably the first and foremost uh, thing I'd like to think about is we do have an equation for work. Since that's what we're trying to find, um, if I know a force, in this case it's the force of friction, times or multiplied by the displacement, we can actually calculate this. So I think this is probably the, the shortest way to do this. So let's go back up and think about what we know in this problem. So we do have, uh, we do have here this sled. We do know, of course, that it travels 38.5 meters. Uh, we also know that the force of friction uh, is what's doing the work, and we're going to need to know mu times Fn. Now, going back to the problem, there's going to be a little bit of a problem here. And that is, if we go back to our original statement, we don't have a coefficient of friction. There is no coefficient of friction given in this problem. We'd be looking for something to say coefficient of friction, or we'd be given some kind of value of, you know, 0.2 or something like that. But guess what? We're not given that. As a result, I'd say that this is kind of a red flag, or it, it leads us to a place that we can't do any calculating. Um, because again, we do know this, but this is unknown, and given that kind of um, way of calculating it, we are not going to be able to do it. 
So let's maybe look at this from a different perspective. That's going to lead us down a place where we can't, we can't finish it. So what if we could find this value right here in a different way? What if we were to use kinematics okay, to find acceleration? Because we could actually probably do that given the information we had. Then use dynamics to find the force of friction. The force of friction to do that. So this would be a two-step process uh, where, first of all, we would have to find acceleration through kinematics and uh, dynamics. Dynamics, of course, is F equals MA, so the sum of forces equals mass times acceleration to do that. And this is a very valid approach to it. However, and let's call this, let me call this option one. I'm going to propose that there's a different way to do this, and it's this, this different way can actually use work and energy and their relationship. So I'm gonna call this option two. Now option two looks a little like this. We know that doing work can change energy. Uh, work, doing work to a system can change the in energy of that system. So let's go back and take a look at our picture and how this comes into play. So basically what we have is we had that force of friction which we drew over here in this picture that force of friction, which is a leftwards force, causes this mass, the sled, to accelerate. Well, as it does that, it's actually changing the energy that's occurring. We already talked about that the potential energy is unchanged. So the potential energy doesn't get changed by the work, but the kinetic energy does. So we initially have some kinetic energy found by this, and at the very end, we don't actually have kinetic energy. So basically, the work that's done is what is removing the energy from this sled system. And so we should be able to calculate the amount of work done. Uh, that's our goal here. The amount of work done is what we're trying to find. If we can basically figure out how much this kinetic energy changed by, we will be finding the work done. Okay, so as we just said, uh, the potential energy here, the potential energy doesn't change. So basically its change is going to be a zero. And um, so the only change occurs because of the kinetic energy changing. So the change in kinetic energy is what equals our work. Now a change in energy, or a change in anything for that matter, is going to be equal to a final, whoops, hold on, let me get this right. It's a velocity final minus an original here. And that's again, the original energy plus the final energy. Once again, though, the velocity at the end is zero. So this whole term, this whole term right here ends up canceling out. So what we actually end up with is that the work done is equal to a negative one half mv original squared. Uh, let's go ahead and substitute our numbers in now. Okay, so we're going to get a minus one half times the mass. You know what? I don't remember what that was. Let's go up here and look. The mass was 50 kilograms. 50 kilograms. So 50 kilograms times the velocity squared. And I do remember what that was. That was 9.5. And the biggest thing to watch out for here is that you don't forget to square it. So let's go ahead, bring up a calculator, and let's see what we get. So we have 0.5 times 50 times 9.5 times 9.5. And we get, looks like 2,256. Two thousand two hundred and fifty six, And because of the negative, of course, uh, that tells us that there's energy being removed. There is going to, in fact, be uh, negative 2,256 joules worth of work done. So to respond to our uh, question for this problem, the friction does negative 2,256 2, joules of work to stop the sled.